What's up, everybody? My name is Sangeet Chofel, and this is Talking Cinema. And to introduce my guest for tonight, she is, to say the least, very elegant. She is soft-spoken, and she is perhaps the epitome of what beauty is. She is the founder of Yiwong Magazine. She's the creator of uh, online content such as Shime, which is a food uh, content online, as well as a travelogue content called Ye Getaway. Welcome to the show, Miss Pema Chodin Tenzin. Thank you. How you been? Good. That was such a nerve-wracking introduction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely. Uh, what have you been doing these days? Um, quite a lot. And uh, yeah, it's been quite overwhelming, mm -hmm. the kind of different uh, responsibilities mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time projects that we've been taking on mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I'll okay. tell you more. <laughs> uh, how has this pandemic affected uh, what you do? Um, it's, it's been I don't know I don't think it's good to say that it's been a blessing but mm -hmm. uh, it's also given me an opportunity to really stop and reflect the kind of work I've been doing. Okay. Um, just before the pandemic I've been I'd been busy with e-getaway so I've sure. been traveling a lot. Sure. But uh, then something really magical happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I met someone who really um, shared mm -hmm. a vision for Yiwong magazine, mm -hmm. the magazine that I had stopped in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because of the pandemic, because I couldn't travel as much, mm -hmm. we really had to stop and then think about bringing back the magazine. Sure. So that's and you why guys have me. brought back the magazine. Yes. And let me just show you to the audience. <laughs> I have the magazine here with me. This is the... Uh, revamped version of the Yuong magazine and there's a lot of collaborative work here yes. especially with the cover as well mm -hmm. please tell us a little bit more about this yeah. okay um do you want me to start like how we sure know, yeah how did it start i mean just we could also talk about uh, perhaps even the cover because it's a very interesting cover yeah it's it's very the project has been really special mm -hmm. um i mentioned that in my uh, creative editor's note mm -hmm. as well um it was in 2019 that I had stopped Yiwong Magazine. It was getting quite uh, overwhelming for me um, because I, I was pretty much doing a lot of it myself and it was getting expensive. Mm -hmm. So the finances also played a huge role. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I got an opportunity to go to Samsi 2020, okay. uh, a creative uh, hub sure. that uh, Pao Chunying founded. That's right. So um, it was there that I met uh, Sona Wangmo. Uh, okay. I call her Anna Sona. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and uh, when I shared that I was no longer doing the magazine, uh -huh. she was quite, uh, you know, taken aback. Sure. Disappointed, perhaps. Maybe. Yeah. Is she a fan of the magazine? Uh, she says she is. Okay. <laughs> but I just, you know, find it uncomfortable when people say they're uh -huh. fans. Uh -huh. um, but uh, she was amazing, um, very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And then we got to talking about, you know, the kind of future for Yi Wong. And mm -hmm. then she shared that, you know, she could help me bring it back. Oh, wow. And uh, the best thing about our collaboration is she's not just someone, you know, who handles, okay, I'll give you the money and okay. you do this, but she's equally involved in so terms of... So she wants of, to be hands-on yeah, with the project, yeah. uh, and, with revamping the and magazine. And that's what I love about the collaboration because I think it's really given us an opportunity to understand what it means to work together. Sure. And that's been the biggest theme of the new issue, collaboration, uh -huh. unity. Uh -huh. And not just unity in terms of working with different creators, writers uh -huh. and photographers also, but a, a kind of unity that represents the, um, the country that we are sure. under the leadership of sure. His Majesty, how people united during the pandemic. Uh -huh. So uh, we thought it was one of the best themes to you know, sort of work around for the new issue. Yeah, and that has a lot to do with the cover, isn't it? Yes. Tell us so the story about the cover. Yeah, uh, the cover project is one of the most special, amazing projects that I've, uh, you know, been privileged to be a part of. Uh -huh. So we commissioned um, four artists, right. and uh, we've been very passionate about promoting and helping, mm -hmm. um, you know, propagate the artist's key, uh, cause in sure. our country. And uh, we wanted it to be artistic, and we wanted it to be a tribute to His Majesty. Mm -hmm. So we commissioned four different uh, artists with completely different artistic styles. Wow. So we told them, okay, we want a tribute for His Majesty, but we just don't want a blatant tribute okay. that we've been seeing, um, but something that really represents what uh, His Majesty's leadership means to you sure. personally. Sure. So um, it took 
a little more than a month mm -hmm. and then COVID, the, pand the lockdown happened right. in between right. and uh, just getting them together with the concept and the idea behind uh -huh. it, it's just been fascinating. So if you look at the cover, uh -huh. um, do you see this round sun That's in right. the middle? Yeah. This, one. this symbol is actually called the Enzo. Okay. And this was conceptualized by Tintin, and he's okay. one of the artists in yeah. the group. And uh, he told us that the Enzo represents mm. uh, enlightenment in Zen Buddhism. Oh, wow. And that's how he saw His Majesty oh, and wow. as an enlightened being. Sure. And then we had artist Jan, who uh -huh. drew the raven, okay. who painted the raven. And it's quite amazing. He actually, he was the first artist to start uh -huh. the entire painting. Okay. And what he did was he tore up all the headlines of the COVID stories from oh. newspapers and he pasted them on a blank canvas. So if you really look at the painting carefully. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so there are all these different it. textures. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's, it's sort of reflecting the kind of phase our mm. country um, went through mm -hmm. and is still going through, but how we are still united in terms of facing the excuse me, <laughs> facing the pandemic. Sure. And if you look at the triangular shapes at the bottom, right in, at the, the textiles, the bottom, right. yeah. So these are all painted and uh, created by artist Tashiyongmo. Okay. And uh, her explanation of why she did that was. You see the color of the bluish hues that uh -huh. start from the left, that's a little dark, uh -huh. and then it moves into something that's more hopeful and okay. something bright. Yeah, so from that a represents colder spring. tone, color, yeah. temperature to a warmer tone. Yeah, right? so it's moving towards spring, and right. that's how she sees the future. Okay. Okay. Um, something that's been, you know, um, quite troubling for all of us okay. into a better mm -hmm. hope sure. for the future. Sure. So these are all different, um, you know, uh, manifestations of sure. how mm -hmm. they saw the so, project. Right. And of course, I can't forget artist Gyembo. Uh -huh. He's a traditional artist who graduated from Zorik uh -huh. and uh, he painted all the mythos and the okay. eternal knot and the traditional okay. water painting sure. and uh, he looks at flowers and water as um, offering to divine beings. Sure. You know how we have like uh, you know offerings of Chutpa and right. Mito to the Cheshum? Right. So that's how he made an offering oh, to wow. His Majesty okay. through the painting. Okay. So it's it's been amazing how these different artists put together these different ideas uh -huh. and managed to put it all together and blend. Um, so it's it's been an honor just to see them work. Where can they pick it up? Well, the magazine is available in all the bookstores mm -hmm. in Thimphu, but mm -hmm. if there are people outside Thimphu who mm -hmm. can't avail the magazine, mm -hmm. we have bookanese.com mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and also Ashrapasa delivering it to them. So, very thankful. Well, that's very good news. Uh, you've heard it, guys. You could pick it up in all these uh, bookstores, uh, especially if you are um, outside of Thimphu. Uh, do they deliver them? Or? Yeah, bookneys.com delivers. Oh, wow. So you can See. go to bookneys.com and order. There you go. Mm -hmm. They deliver. Um, next question I want to ask you is, now obviously this particular project has been a, a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. Now you're so used to working by yourself with your uh, online video content. How is it different this time around? With, I mean, yes, it's a magazine. Mm -hmm. It's not a visual content, but just the process of working collaboratively. Mm -hmm. How is that experience like? Oh, it's definitely a whole new experience. Mm -hmm. um, along with the magazine, we, uh -huh. um, Anna Sonam and I have launched uh -huh. a new company. It's uh -huh. a multimedia company. Oh, wow. So we have Yiwong Magazine, mm -hmm. we have Yi Getaway, uh -huh. we have uh, Yiwong Video Productions. Okay. So we do documentaries and uh, you know wonderful. these kind of video services as well. Sure. And uh, social media content. So okay. it's a completely new brand uh -huh. under Yiwong Bhutan. So yeah, it's been quite exciting because um, I think uh, for a very long time, like you mentioned, I've been used to working alone, mm -hmm. um, working from my house, mm -hmm. um, you know, going to work mm -hmm. early in the morning. With and I've been in to PJs. your office once. Uh, I remember when you were, uh, I think, I believe you were, when you were living right underneath, uh, somewhere near Changanka. Yeah. Uh, you were, you moved your office in, in the attic, attic and I had come to your office and I yeah. remember you, it was all frazzled up. Uh, it was for such a, a tiny space. For a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was used to working all by myself. Uh -huh. um, definitely the move towards collaboration mm -hmm. and working with a bigger team mm -hmm. is um, an interesting new step. Mm -hmm. But it definitely makes the quality of work come out in a way better. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, there's a lot more... Because there's a lot more teamwork and involvement, mm -hmm. the output is so much better. Sure. And I think that's something that I took for granted. Sure. Uh, you um, know, I was very like, you know, things was it challenging for you in, in order to move to that process of mm -hmm. collaboration? 
because I mean sometimes uh, even even with myself I mean mm -hmm. I do a lot of work my, by myself and sometimes when I have to collaborate there's a lot of clash of ideas yeah, yeah. and it becomes challenging because you're not used to it. Mm -hmm. Were there any type of challenges like that? It helps when people that you work with share mm -hmm. the same vision. Okay. It really helps. Right. Um, if they have similar ideas and mm -hmm. the vision and the ultimate goal that they see for the magazine mm -hmm. or the videos that you work with, mm -hmm. um, if it's similar, then it really helps. Okay. And uh, once you get past the, you know, the smaller creative differences sure. and realize that the help that you get sure. is actually very beneficial, sure. that overshadows everything. Right. And the ultimate uh, vision of the final project or yeah. final outcome is exactly. much better. Exactly. That's awesome. It makes a huge difference. That you is so see awesome. that and yes. you see that in the new issue. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So do, do remember to pick up uh, a copy of the Young magazine. Do not forget. But let's move on to what I really want to talk about. Yes. And this is something that I have been doing travelogues. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I do travelogues for television, but you've been doing travelogues for social media uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. um, how is that experience like? I mean, you've been doing that for no, a long time. Before we start, I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank you. Okay. Because um, I remember seeing Najin Express like way before uh -huh. I even ventured into doing what I do. Uh -huh. And it was after I saw you and your show uh -huh. and the kind of passion and interest that you had wow. um, that mm. really inspired me. Oh, and I you. remember telling you, like, I think I don't remember where, uh -huh. but uh, like when I see you other, uh -huh. you know, outside, uh -huh. I always made it a point to share that with yes, you. Yes, uh, we've had plenty of conversations before. Yeah. Uh, I we have also done collaborations together. Yes, and so, you were the yes, first one to really get people thinking about right. looking at our own country differently uh -huh. and to not be ashamed about being a tourist in your own country. Mm. And I think that really made a huge difference in how I saw my own country. So, thank you. Well, thank you very <laughs> much. Uh, that's, uh, that's such a wonderful compliment. But, um, mm. You, right? Starting this uh, um, e-getaway, mm -hmm. uh, travelogue. Uh, how did that happen? I mean, obviously, I have something to do with it, <laughs> apparently. Uh, and uh, thank you for that. But uh, how was the experience like? Well, um, before we started getting into videos, uh -huh. um, I remember sometime in 2014, mm -hmm. um, of course, we had social media, but there weren't a lot of people mm -hmm. putting out social media content, sure. right? Um, I was still continuing with a lot of travel content in the magazine. Sure. Um, in 2012, um, I, we did an entire feature on top 10 things to do in Bumtang. Okay. And I still remember getting, uh, you, you know, having such a difficult time uh -huh. trying to convince hotels uh -huh. to, you know, promote. Because they never really looked at Bhutanese as potential domestic, sure. um, you know, uh, clients. Sure. So there were a lot of those kind of issues. Sure. But um, I think the reason why we started working on those travel features was because we wanted to promote, uh, promote domestic tourism. Uh -huh. Whenever you go to places like Bumtang right. or Punakha or right. Pobjika, like yeah, there are, there's a lot of interest among locals as well. Right. But uh, most hotels at that time didn't really see Bhutanese right. as potential clients. So that's why I wanted to change that. Sure. I wanted um, locals to look at these destinations as you know proper mm -hmm. holiday places sure. and not just look at Bangkok or right. you know Singapore. spots in India Singapore right. you know for travel destinations which are a lot more expensive mm -hmm. so we started those features in the magazine and then slowly we were like okay I think there's a you know bigger growing audience on Facebook and uh, YouTube and Instagram so then and I'd always been fascinated with travel shows. Was it a natural transition now obviously you did have travel content mm -hmm. on your magazine uh, was it a, just a natural transition to get into the video part of it um, or vlogging or perhaps it, creating content for social uh -huh, media platforms? Yeah. It was, it was not as natural okay. because I didn't want to be in front of camera, okay. in front of the camera. Right. Um, I still feel a little uh -huh. queasy, uh -huh. um, just, you know, whether it's vlogging or, sure. I don't think I'm too comfortable doing that uh -huh. and it's still something that I'm getting used to. Sure. And uh, when we did the first uh, episode, yeah. I did it with uh, Namgizam. Okay. And uh, she had just come back from the US and I was okay. like, let's go to Gandhi Kempa, you know, sure, yeah. and then we can co-host. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kind of Facebook reach that she mm -hmm. had really helped. Right. She has so, massive social uh, media followers. Definitely. So. And uh, uh, not just that, mm -hmm. but uh, it really, she really helped me mm -hmm. um, 
get comfortable in okay. that zone. Right. So I wasn't hosting all by myself. Right. I had my friend that I was comfortable with. And she comes so, with a background, backload of experience yes, working yes. for the television. Exactly. Right? So, so if definitely. you go through that introduction for right. that first Gante right. um, Ye Getaway that we shot mm -hmm. back in 2015, um, it, was, it was very nerve wracking for mm -hmm. me. But then after that, I was like, oh, I think and the response was really good. Okay. So I was like, okay, not just Pobjika. I think there are a lot of other destinations sure. that we can capture. Sure. And although we started, um, I started Ye Getaway from a very travel perspective because uh -huh. I was interested to visit uh -huh. these places. Um, I think now with the kind of uh, you know feedback mm -hmm. and encouragement we've been getting from the audience, mm -hmm. I'm slowly trying to explore using the platform as not just a travel um, guide, mm -hmm. but also an educational platform. Um, I think it was a year ago, I received a message from a tour guide. Sure. And he said, he actually advised to use the platform uh -huh. as an educational piece. Sure. How can you educate young people on culture, sure. on tradition, sure. on folk stories? History. History, even, right? yeah, with the recent Puzzle video. Mm -hmm. And uh, being able to reach that audience mm -hmm. and tell the story of these places that mm -hmm. we should be knowing, mm -hmm. but we don't, right. um, has been a fascinating opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the kind of opportunities we are exploring now. Okay. Uh, not just travel guides, we'll still continue to do that. Mm -hmm. But how can we tell rich cultural stories? Sure. Um, you know, stories of Gurun Buche, Shabdung, Pajdung Gum Shipo, and all these different, uh, whether heritage villages, ki conservation mm -hmm. stories. There's so much. There's so, so much. much to explore. So much. I know, right? So much. Yes. And it's exciting, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, and I'm sure you, like with your Nation Express ki experience, you managed to bring out the human interest side of these stories, right. not just travel and not just the Zongkaks as individual destinations. You would know that there is a lot more um, stories of the people, um, the culture and the history of that place that comes out through people's right. stories. And exploring that is right. a completely different uh, yes. ball game altogether. Yes, it is. Um, do you ever lose that passion? Are you still as excited as you once were, wow. right? When you first started your uh, Yi Getaway. Are you still as excited as back then? That's my biggest fear, mm -hmm. that I'll lose that mm -hmm. um, excitement. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to say that I'm still, I still mm -hmm. get jitters every mm -hmm. time we talk about a new project. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I'm not able to go uh, on as many trips because you know, we have work here right. now, we have to work on the next issue and things mm -hmm. like that. But we're still continuing mm -hmm. a lot of these projects. And I'm quite excited about some of the new ones that we're planning for mm -hmm. summer and uh, fall of 2021. Can so, you perhaps yeah. give us a little snippet of what's going to be? <laughs> I mean, obviously, not, perhaps maybe you could first start with yeah. your latest project, The Puzzle Zone. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about it. This was actually in collaboration with the Central Monastic Body, mm -hmm. um, also known as Shung mm -hmm. And uh, it's been quite a revelation because for a very long time, I thought people in the monastic body mm. were very conservative sure. and, you know, right. very rigid, rigid in terms right. of exactly. Have to follow the religious rules. Exactly. Right. But uh, after meeting with them and then really conversing mm. um, on the kind of ideas we had, mm you'll be shocked to see how open-minded they are. Mm. And uh, it's, it's very encouraging to see that they're very concerned about the younger generation. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stories of whether it's Shabdung or Kurjumboche or, you know, traditional uh, festivals, religious festivals, Hijus and Jupchins, I think they're really concerned that the younger generation are not taking as much interest in it. Mm -hmm. And um, they're quite passionate about reaching that audience. Okay. Um, and uh, having that conversation with them and getting them to understand that it's time to really adopt a whole new style and mm. medium, but also being very respectful sure. to the kind of, uh, you know, regulations sure. and uh, uh, traditions, how do you say? Perhaps, traditions right, that right. they're used to, mm -hmm. still respecting mm -hmm. that, but adopting a very new and fresh way of sure. telling these stories. So they're very open-minded. So, so in a lot of ways, it's it. that evolution of that thought process mm -hmm. or, or maybe catching up or being of the times. Yes. Right. And um, if you uh, watch the Puzzle video, uh -huh. um, we just didn't focus too much on the ceremony mm -hmm. and, you know, how it's done. Right. But we wanted to focus on bringing a different perspective to mm -hmm. the Puzzle ceremonies. Okay. And uh, we interviewed three um, 
one three generation family, Buzzer oh, family. Okay. So the grandfather was also a Buzzer right. in the 70s, and right. he still is now. Uh -huh. And the father is also a Buzzer, uh -huh. and the, the son, grandson, right. yeah, the grandson um, became a Buzzer for the first time. Okay. This year. So it was his uh, in, in, initiation type of thing. Yes. Right. And the fascinating thing is, um, he couldn't speak. Um, very good zonka. Okay. So when we interviewed him, the grandson, sure. and he's just twelve. Okay. Just getting wow. to thirteen. Very young, right? Very, very young. <laughs> his, his, the headgear didn't even fit in his head, oh, no. so he was constantly adjusting it. <laughs> so he was more comfortable with English, and okay. I found that fascinating because uh -huh. I thought he really represented a uh -huh. bigger generation of young kids sure, his age. Sure, sure. I mean, a lot of our young kids can't speak Zonka very well. I mean, I'm ashamed I can't speak Zonka very well. well but I'm I guilty of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that really represented uh -huh. that younger generation. And to be able to interview the grandfather, sure. the father and the grandson sure. on what um, being a buzzup means to them, sure. uh, that, that was really amazing. Sure. Mm. Uh, but it's just fascinating. He's 12, uh, he's 12 years old. Mm -hmm who's interested in maintaining that culture of puzzles. Very interested. And I'm sure he's very, very interested passionate. in like, improving his zonghe as well. Yes. And, and that's uh, just amazing. Exactly. And to have um, a kid like that uh -huh. take such a deep interest and uh, the, the kind of enthusiasm he had uh -huh. being a buzz up. He was uh -huh. like, I'm so proud that, you know, uh -huh. I get to do what my grandfather and father yes. did. We need more of our young kids sure. to, um, sure. you know, emulate tra traditions sure. like that. Sure. And if we can access that generation, mm. if we can reach these stories to that generation, mm. that would be a big win for us. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And it, it's amazing how he, how deeply connected to his roots and his will to connect to his roots uh, mm -hmm. are. Because that, I always say this in my, uh, my episodes, um, identity. That's how you build your identity. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just amazing. And you're always focused on a lot of these younger kids, yes, right? Because did, they yes. represent the future. Exactly. And they actually play such a strong role in making sure that community survives also. Mm -hmm. And to put that spotlight on the younger generation, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty amazing. And that's what I liked about National oh, Express as well. Thank, thank <laughs> you very much. Uh, but continue. Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us uh, what your... Uh, Projects, <coughs> lineup projects are obviously in the future. Um, of course, there are some that I'm not really allowed to share. Sure, <laughs> uh, you can maybe perhaps just mm. vaguely mention it, or I mean, it's, um, it's totally up to you. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm not sure whether you watched uh, the Brigdungla trek uh, video. I have, okay. I have, yes. So we are very and interested. So has yeah. many other people. So, <laughs> and uh, that project was very special mm -hmm. um, because it was. Um, actually, we were given the first opportunity mm -hmm. to tread that uh, mm -hmm. new route mm -hmm. and um, to document the story, not just of the landscape mm -hmm. and the route, like, okay, how many meters and mm -hmm. things like that, and not just as a travel destination, mm -hmm. but to be able to um, communicate mm -hmm. and uh, meet with the locals who will be benefiting from sure, these. Sure, and direct benefit to them. Yeah, sure. through tourism. And to be able to engage with mm -hmm. them and understand why um, Mount Pola is so special mm -hmm. to them and to see that with your own eyes, mm -hmm. uh, that, that will definitely be one of the most memorable experiences uh -huh. I've ever had. Uh -huh. And that is something that I want to continue. Uh -huh. And uh, we've been talking to some of the districts, the mm -hmm. Dzongkok administrations, to really look at um, discovering new treasures within mm. their Dzongkok that mm. uh, the rest of the world, or even our own people for within that matter, well, right. yeah, that people don't know about. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fascinating thing about Brigdungla is a lot of boomtaps had mm. heard about it. Uh -huh. And like they, didn't when they, know about they didn't know about it. Well, yeah, w yeah. Uh, when I saw the video, I've never heard of uh, Brigdungla. And I've yeah. been to Boomtang several times. Yeah, even boomtaps there didn't know about it. Like, I'm boomtap, I have never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm, I was thinking, uh, There'd be so many other fascinating sure. places and treasures, sure. like you'd know also. Right, yeah. Like in so many different parts of the country that we have yet to, explore you know, explore. And learn about it, yeah. right? And so I really want to continue that. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about sty your stylistic sense. Now, mm -hmm. different people have different perspectives of how they want to tell a story. Your style. Uh, describe your style to us. Um... I don't think I really paid attention mm -hmm. to my style as mm -hmm. such, but um, I started getting a lot of feedback that I think my style is more uh, more of like a voiceover. Okay. So I have a certain way of narrating the story, sure. 
and uh, most of the time I like to structure the videos. Right. So it's not as spontaneous sure. as vlogs. Sure. Um, of course, that's a completely different style sure. and they have a different audience. Right. Um, I like to structure it more like a travel documentary, sure. but not make it too rigid at the same time. Sure. And um, I think uh, most of that feedback was that, that it's like based on um, the narration style that sort of right. carries the video, but mm -hmm. it's also the story of the place itself. Well, I mean, for me, I, I personally find it very polished. And mm -hmm. I, I think, I mean, if, if I can describe your style, okay. and if you don't mind it, and I think, I think that works for you in the sense that you're very polished and just the subject matters and things perspective uh, mm -hmm. of how you tell it mm -hmm. is sort of works in that sense. And especially, I mean, I think uh, to transition into some of the videos that you have done in terms of home decor, you know, it sort of all works in together like that because it's supposed to look polished and nice and beautiful, right? And I think that's what your style is and I think People appreciate that, mm -hmm. and especially that narration voiceover thing that leads it. It's very beautiful. I mean, it's very. I mean, some of the things that you've written are very poetic in its essence oh, thank and you. Uh, emotional. I mean, it, it evokes so much emotion. I believe. Yeah. I think there was mm -hmm. this one particular video. I think it was the Brignon Love video, mm -hmm. where it was. Uh, it wasn't even a like you were talking about. Obviously, you were talking about the place, but it was more in a po poetic way of how you felt about mm -hmm. the place. I think. Um, I don't know if it's a problem. Maybe, um, maybe it's something that I have to think about. Uh -huh. But most of the times, uh, I tend to put my own personal emotion into that mm -hmm. a bit too much. Mm -hmm. Do you think <laughs> yeah. that's a problem? Um, if you're working for certain projects, then it okay. might be. But okay. if it's an experience that you want to share from your personal uh -huh. side, then it's fine. Then it's great, no? Yeah. And uh, because there are certain... Um, but it has been most of the trips that I've taken. Mm -hmm. I always try to indulge my senses. Mm -hmm. So travel is not just about seeing right. a beautiful place, taking a picture and posting uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. uh, you have to be able to open yourself up to embrace the sure. culture, um, interact with the people, listen. Mm -hmm. I feel we don't listen mm -hmm. as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sights and sounds of mm -hmm. Laya is completely different from Manas. Yes. And it's not just visually. Okay. Liar is more of an abode of silence uh -huh. with an occasional howling of the wind at night right. and the tinkling of the yak bells. Wow. Just beautifully and put there. Have you ever been to a place where clouds chase you like ocean waves? resemble resurrected titans, where rocks on high ridges look like fallen ancient fortresses. This place exists. This is Brigdumla, Bumtang, Central Bhutan. And then this, the sight and sound of Manas is mm -hmm. completely different. Like right. when you sleep in Manas, you hear the river sure. and then the you crickets, hear the crickets. The frogs, you know. Frogs, I don't pay attention as okay. much because I'm terrified of Are you? Frogs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so That's sorry I mentioned the uh, frogs. <laughs> yeah, but I don't pay attention as much. Uh -huh. But it's the crickets, it's the sound of the crickets that okay. you can't forget. Right. So when you travel, if you embrace all of those sights and sounds, uh -huh. I think that experience turns into something wholesome yeah something bigger than sure. you prepped yourself for sure. and i get very emotional when it comes to things like that and i try to keep a piece of myself there mm -hmm. and also take a piece of that place sure. with me sure. um, so having that um, sort of experience mm -hmm. allows you to either be able to articulate that through mm -hmm. the video or mm -hmm. also make sure other people experience that sure. so that's what we try to do and that emotional thing is okay. quite important. Definitely. I mean, you have to be emotionally connected mm. to the place, right? I yeah. Mean, that's, what we, that's why we are travelers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we love traveling. Which leads me to the next question, and I think you might have already answered it, but is that the reason you love traveling? You know, I started traveling um, 
with a completely different set of reasons mm -hmm. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was, of course, like top 10 things to do, work sure. on listicles, sure. you know, work with hotels sure. and uh, um, More of this very touristy. Style yeah, type of video. very okay. touristy. Uh -huh. And uh, now I travel because I look forward to um, finding new places, mm. um, exploring new cultures, mm. um, listening to new languages and meeting new people with different mm. perspectives, mm. different life experiences, mm -hmm. different ideas. Mm -hmm. And with each um, trip that I've done, I've been very blessed to have people who have taught me these things. Sure. And it wasn't something that, you know, I naturally learned. Sure. Like when I went to Baribrang with Pao, sure. with the kind of story, like, you know, he's an amazing storyteller. Yes, um, with the kind of stories he told um, here, he narrated uh -huh. about the Malingpa. Sure. And also introduced to the people who were in Baribrang sure. and listening to what they have to say mm. and uh, just getting a piece of what their life is like, mm. their daily routine is mm -hmm. like. It completely changes why you want to travel. Right. And even working with very hardworking civil servants uh -huh. um, for these Songkhak videos, uh -huh. Um, I still remember Madam Kinzang from Tashi uh -huh. uh, Madam Chimi, and uh, this really amazing, hardworking, passionate um, finance officer, Tsring okay. uh, Penjo sir, uh -huh. who did the Brigdungla tour with us. Uh -huh. And he was the guide. I mean, he's a finance officer. And he was also and the he's guide for that particular project. Yes, and he's so passionate about that trail. Uh -huh. And he's so, um, you know, he wants tourism uh -huh. to benefit Bumtang. Uh -huh. And also the Tsongdas that I worked with, okay. like Bumtang, uh, uh -huh. Tashi Yangtze, uh, Ha, uh -huh. they've been very passionate about really making a change mm. in their Tsongkhak mm. in terms of how tourists and also locals see the Tsongkhak. And wow. I'll really be grateful for the kind of life-changing, um, you know, uh, reflections they've allowed mm -hmm. to, you know, mm -hmm. make me go through. So. Well, that's great. I mean, that's that's why travel is so great, isn't it? I mean, it is. It it, it affects people in so many different levels uh, for uh, for, th for themselves as well. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, travel it was a it was more of a personal reflection rather than the place itself. Obviously, mm -hmm. the place itself is very important, but you look. Uh, I tend to learn about myself more than anything. Mm. You know, especially being in touch with other people, knowing other people's story. You tend to learn about yourself, I think. Did uh, you more. worry about your own identity as a Bhutanese? I mean, uh, I know you studied outside right. for a while. Um, but That curiosity that... was there, obviously, uh -huh. in the mm -hmm. sense that, okay, oh, I don't, know my, uh, I don't know my own country in that sense. That curiosity was there. Yeah. So even in terms of the perspective of how I've approached the, the, the program was like, hey, I don't know my country. I'm going to go explore it. I want mm -hmm. to learn about it. Yeah, and, and it's each fascinating, experience, isn't it? Each trip, each experiencing uh, experience is more, um, I wouldn't say humiliating, mm -hmm. but it makes you question yourself. Like, yeah. you say you are from, you know, a certain place, but right. you don't know anything right. about that place. Right. Yeah. But so. that shouldn't be a, that shouldn't be a, 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 a hindrance, I believe. I think that should be a it motivating be a step, yeah. factor mm -hmm. in order for you to find out and exactly. be fascinated about exactly. finding out. Yeah. Uh, be excited about finding out. And mm -hmm. uh, if there's anybody who's watching out there who's interested in doing travelogues and do, uh, writing travel contents, that's the type of thing you need to have in your mind, isn't it? Yeah, that you curiosity. Have to be excited. Um, next question I want to ask is, uh, Videography. Mm -hmm. Now, did you study videography? How did you get into, I mean, like when you first started your video projects, uh, was it difficult? Uh, well, did you get some training on uh, cameras? And well, uh, for the Yee Getaway projects, okay. I work with freelance videographers. Mm. I, um, the thing is, I can't depend, with the kind of shots that we work with, mm -hmm. I can't just, just depend on my shots alone. Sure. First sure. of all, I'm not really a good videographer. Sure. I would rather work with uh, a really you know, a professional sure, sure. one who freelances. Uh -huh. So I've been very lucky and uh -huh. blessed to work with some of the most amazing videographers, uh -huh. um, you know, that we have uh -huh. now. And they do their own things. Uh -huh. But every time I have a project, sure. I just let they them know that... come along, yeah. get on the tra mm -hmm. same train. Yeah. And okay. it's quite exciting because different videographers have sure. a different style. Of sure. course, the equipment they work with is completely different. Sure. Um, but I just give them an idea that, okay, okay. This is the kind of shots we okay. want. And then every now and then um, I, I just guide them like, okay, mm -hmm. these are the shots. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of frame mm -hmm. I want. And are you uh, a tough director? 
Uh, <laughs> some people say I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, but uh, most of the time, I think with these trips, you just want to mm -hmm. make it like fun as sure. much as possible. Sure. But uh, sometimes it's really difficult to keep it fun well, when yeah, you're so stressed. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, you're doing work. Yeah. So can't all be fun, can it? Be? Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. Some people have mm -hmm. no problems, but mm -hmm. there are some who think that I'm a bit too much of a tough cookie. <laughs> but I think you have to be, especially if you want to realize your vision, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think most directors are um, very particular. Very, very particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even more so, even the cinematographers, you know, mm. especially. So they might be also particular. So, would, were there any, um, if you're willing to share, were there mm. any incidents where uh, that type of creative process clashed, especially um, with the cinema videographer and not your really, own ideas? Really, because the ones that I worked with, they've been very open to sure. listening to, you know, the kind of ideas I sure. had, and uh, most of the time, uh -huh. the the work that they put out has been amazing, uh -huh. and uh, if you work with a really good videographer, uh -huh. your editing becomes so easy. Right. Then you have so many different shots sure. um, to choose from. Because you film to edit, right? Exactly. You know, that process and makes it much easier. Yeah. And of course, with uh, travel, aesthetics is very important. So if your videographer understands mm -hmm. that and is able to capture all of mm -hmm. that through, you know, not just through the landscape, mm -hmm. but people, culture, food, mm -hmm. All of that, uh, that really helps. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the time I um, do the food shots myself. Okay. I'm, uh, I think more than, um, you know, any other sure. subjects, I prefer shooting food. Right. Because you also know you'll get to eat them. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> that's the benefit of uh, <laughs> benefit filming of uh, food. Uh, yeah. But let's talk about that. Yeah, mm. Jimé, right? Um, yeah. Mm. Tell us about it. I mean, obviously, I'm sure most people have seen it already. Um, videos on uh, restaurants and foods and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, tell us about it. So, like I said, I've been very passionate about uh -huh. photographing food. Uh -huh. um, but uh, we were thinking about, you know, turning it into a different proper channel under, sure. you know, the Yiwong banner. Sure. So, it's, it's, it, it hasn't been so active for some mm -hmm. time, but we're planning on bringing it back. Mm -hmm. So Jime is all about, you know, documenting different types of food available, sure. restaurants, cafes, sure. because now there's so many choices. Yes, there is, yeah. yeah. And Nibu is filled with restaurants. Exactly. And it's fascinating. Yeah. And food is something that mm -hmm. everyone, you know, would want to watch, mm -hmm. uh, whether you're, you know, a little child or you're older, your mm -hmm. demographics mm -hmm. is like all over the place, mm -hmm. but food is something that unites everyone. Yes. So, um, on a commercial level, I think we wanted to focus on hotels and mm. restaurants and cafes, sure. but at the same time, we wanted to tell stories of traditional Bhutanese food. Mm -hmm. I do a bit of that through Getaway, mm -hmm. but through Shime, we really want to be able to... Totally concentrate on the food, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just wonderful. Uh, tell us one, one of the best experiences you had filming Shime, basically. Um, for me personally, it's always going to be with travel food. Uh -huh. um, we have an entire list of amazing food that we got to eat uh -huh. during our travels uh -huh. and something that I'd never tried before. Um, when we were in Ha, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know whether you've heard of Pilu. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I had never the... heard of Pilu before. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my. I mean, my husband is Hap uh -huh. and he used to bring Pilu, uh -huh. but that was the first time so that I... So tasted it, but I you just didn't know it. it was Pilu. And I didn't even, um, uh, you know, know, uh, know how it was made. Okay. And when we went to one of the homestays in uh -huh. Ha, uh -huh. the woman there, she uh -huh. demonstrated how Pilu is made. Sure. Um, so you know how Pilu is made, right? With all these twigs and Yes, these and vines the... that they yeah. put in the cylindrical wooden mm -hmm. barrel type of thing. And it's the condensation of cheese and milk that gets right. collected on the twigs yes. that turns into this really gooey texture. Right. Very fine, soft. Yeah. It's an acquired taste though. <laughs> is it? I've never tasted it. I know what a filu is, but I've never tasted it. It's pungent. <laughs> is it? Really? It's, yeah. Well, I mean, it's cheese, isn't yeah. it? So. Yeah. It's got to so be pungent. People who love it, it's uh -huh. like durian. Uh -huh. If you love it, you okay. love it. If you, you don't, you'll hate it. Okay. So pilu is like how that. would you how would you eat it in a dish? Like um, I mean do you like imadasi type of thing or? Um people who love pilu would mm -hmm. only have pilu with butter by itself. Yeah, just cook wow. it uh, like that and that's wow. how traditionally like I think you should ask a hap a proper no. hap uh, uh -huh. you know how or I pilu think I'll would go be to ha and you go to high and you try. Episode on pilu. I'll tell you which homestay to go to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wonderful. So yeah, but you can have it with imadasi uh -huh. like you know dasi with ema. Uh -huh. But one interesting um uh, dish we experienced when we were in Ha uh -huh. was uh, pilu with inhente. 
in Hinte. And apparently they don't put that in Hinte as much. Okay. Um, but we shot this entire episode of how to make Hinte sure. with uh, Anku, of sure. course. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we You've had been Pilu. been on this show, by the way, yes. Yes, you told uh -huh. me. And uh, Pilu, uh -huh. uh, Amul cheese, uh -huh. of course, uh, mm -hmm. Amul cheese, and uh -huh. uh, Dati. Okay. So three different cheeses in one oh, Hinte. Wow. So that was yum. Wow. It's kind of ruined the rest of the other kind of hint is right. for me now. Traditional way of making it. <sighs> yeah, yeah. But hey, that's the evolution of food, isn't it? I mean, our exactly. taste, uh, taste bud changes and uh, if they could meet that with something new, like Pilu. Mm. And it's wonderful. it's fascinating to explore that mm -hmm. side also mm -hmm. because we think Bhutanese food is just emadasi and yeah. rice and you know. Generally, when we think about yeah. it, we just think about emadasi, simchum dasi, yeah. dasi, right? Yeah. Like but when we so went to uh, Tashiangtse, okay. there was a homestay in Bundeling, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and we got to try dati pa. Mm, which is wh um, it's dati. Okay. It's a big chunk of cheese, okay. but they cook it like meat. Oh. So it's with wow. a lot of butter, sure. and you're supposed to consume it as it is. Wow. So it's like Must a huge rich. chunk of cheese. Oh, it's Very really rich. rich. And even the alcohol, uh -huh. um, like we have chunky, uh -huh. um, the millet chunky, sure. which is very dark yes, and yes. it looks like tar. Yes. Um, so the homestay owner, Abtuktin, uh -huh. he served that with spring onions. Okay. They actually cut spring onions like on soup. the... Yeah, it looks like, like soup. Like almost like soup, But it's yeah. alcohol. Wow. So it's very strong, but they serve it with spring onions. That's amazing. And it's supposed to give you a little bit of that mm. zing. Okay. When you drink that. All right. So it, it's fascinating. There are that, all these I mean, dishes. Yes, yes it is. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the reason why I love traveling within Bhutan. I mean, it's, there's so many nitty gritty small things that we normally miss out. Exactly. But if yeah. you keep your mind open, eyes open and your senses open, yeah, this is what you discover, isn't it? Yeah, you have to be open to trying everything. That's wonderful. Instead of like, oh, I don't eat that. Uh -huh. I can't try that. Right. <laughs> you have to get rid of that and right. then be open to it. Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Just a reminder to the audience, uh, if you are going to be consuming alcohol, consume <laughs> it, uh, you know, uh, in a smart manner. Uh, be, you know, don't drink too much. And yeah. don't drink and drive. <laughs> disclaimer. Um, Dis sorry. A disclaimer sorry, there. I completely forgot about that <laughs> disclaimer. Um, but um, tell us, uh, you know, there's a lot of viewers uh, uh, who's probably watching this show, mm -hmm. who's, fan, who's probably a fan of you. Uh, who probably want to do something that you have uh, that you have been doing? Uh, first thing, um, in terms of sustaining it mm. now, in terms of as a, as a career, mm -hmm. um, how do you maintain it? Is it difficult? I think it's been a huge wake up call for me. Okay. Um, I remember going through a phase when I just wanted to um, encourage people to be inspired by your passion, sure. your drive, sure. um, that that enthusiasm. Uh -huh. um, is important uh -huh. but I think you reach a point where you try to understand that hey if you want to keep this going you have to sustain your business right. you're not working all by yourself there right. are people that you need to sure. uh, pay and take care mm -hmm. of and uh, especially looking at it as mm -hmm. um, you know a career path mm -hmm. there are so many other factors mm -hmm. uh, whether it's business mm -hmm. um, the financial part of mm -hmm. it that you have to pay attention to um, but uh, uh, if you're talking about travel in particular, mm. I think there are so many opportunities. Sure. You just have to work hard um, to create a brand for yourself mm -hmm. and be very uh, consistent with mm. the kind of deliverables, uh, the output sure. that you're putting out. Sure. Um, whether it's the videos or even blogs, sure. the write-up. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you need to be consistent mm -hmm. and also be able to convince that you know if you have sponsors, agencies mm -hmm. that you're working with, um, they look at you as somebody uh, who's reliable sure. and uh, not just a short-term thing. Mm -hmm. Because I've also seen people who want to do it for a little while, they right. make a lot of money right. and then they're not consistent with it. Right. And respecting your subject matter, mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. If you know what you're uh, wor working on mm -hmm. and you, if you respect it, mm -hmm. uh, respect it enough to want to produce something that's worthy, sure. not because you're driven by the money, sure. um, your business will fall into sure. place and there will so be other... Value, not just in terms of money, but value in terms of the subject matter that yeah. you're talking about mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. respecting it, how yeah. you put it. Because okay. people do notice sure. if you do... Um, uh, if you do something that's worthy and you know you understand the kind of content that you're mm -hmm. working on mm -hmm. and you're very particular about mm -hmm. how it's put together it shows. also it shows. Right. it shows and i feel the right people will notice right. 
and then um, you don't have to worry about you know being a short term thing. Sure. Yeah. And you can sustain that. Way. Yes. Um, you have to work your butt off though. Well, can yes, I say it? it's it's a it's a lot of hard work. I mean, nothing comes easy. That mm -hmm. I think, uh, especially our younger generation, they need to understand this. And I, I think most of them they do understand nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to put in the work in order for yeah. to 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 reap the fruits. Because right? I think uh, when it comes to social media content, mm -hmm. they see it as something that's glamorous, right. you know, travel. Right. That they it think, happens just like yeah. this, right? Because there's a lot of um, these influences that's coming mm -hmm. from, you know, mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. You look at travel influencers, mm -hmm. they're always with, you know, in fancy destinations, right. you know, all put right. together. But right. there's a lot of money and hard work that goes behind yes. putting a photo together. Right. And uh, these influences work very, very hard. Mm -hmm. So I think instead of being, um, you know, uh, enamored by mm -hmm. the aesthetic of it, mm -hmm. I think we need to understand there's a lot of work that goes into it, right. whether it's travel videos, mm -hmm. documentaries, or even just travel photos, mm -hmm. um, the amount of research, mm -hmm. work, and mm -hmm. uh, the trial and error. Mm -hmm. And even magazines, right? Definitely, magazines. yeah. Um, any parting words that you would like to... Uh, uh, say uh, before we end the show? Parting words. Um, I, I think I've been very blessed mm -hmm. uh, with the kind of opportunities I've received, mm -hmm. um, whether it was through Getaway or even with this new collaboration. Mm -hmm. And um, although it has given me an opportunity to think twice mm -hmm. and look back at how I used to look at my career or life in general, that mm -hmm. You know, you have to be interested, you have to work hard, um, you have to have that passion. Mm. Of course, that's important, mm. but also being very smart mm. with your decisions, mm. thinking long term. Sure. I think that's very important. Sure. And not short term. Uh, right. Not short term, okay. long term. Well, Bima, thank you so much. It's been an honor. Thank um, you. To mm. have you here in the show. Mm. And it, this has been such a wonderful conversation we've had. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thank you. Ladies and gentlemen.